Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just in the middle of making lunch for myself. Something scrumptious for my mother. So Psycho 2 stars Anthony Perkins once again as Norman Bates, and it takes place about 20 years after the original. Norman Bates has been released from prison. He has apparently been cured of his mother persona, and he is just desperate to fit back into society. However, society isn't so glad to have him back, mostly because of the victim's families who want to see him go mad again, and he may very well be going mad again as he goes back into his mother persona, as he goes back into his normal life at the Bates Motel. Now, I've been hesitant to watch this for years. I've been hesitant to watch anything outside of Hitchcock's classic. Now, the TV show is quite good. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I enjoy Bates Motel from what I've seen. I think that that is the best way to revisit the, the world of Norman Bates. I finally became open to the idea of watching the sequels to see what the next phase of the story was because you know what? Um, I, Hitchcock's movie will always be great. Even if the, the sequels turned out to be garbage, it will never tarnish the original. I'm not one of those moviegoers where if I don't like the new Star Wars, you know, the original trilogy is ruined for me. I'm not one of those moviegoers. And I do love the new Star Wars, but there are definitely fans out there where when they've seen certain Star Wars movies, they just fall out of love with the series. But I've never been one of those moviegoers. Um, so how is Psycho 2? Psycho 2 is surprisingly good, and thanks mostly to Anthony Perkins' performance. Even in the original, he was easy to feel sorry for. I mean, you were terrified of him later on in the film, but he seems like just a normal kind of socially awkward guy, you know, really nice and, and kind and means well, and he brings that again in part two. And really, I felt sorry for him throughout this entire movie because I was rooting for him to be able to prove himself that he wasn't insane anymore, but really, it was society that let him down. If people would have just left him alone, you know, things would have turned out as bad because they do turn out bad. I mean, it's a horror movie. That's not a spoiler. Of course things go south. But I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't because I care about the Norman Bates character. And that's what makes Norman Bates unique versus, you know, Hannibal Lecter or Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees. You know, you don't get any sympathy for any of those characters. They're all interesting and scary, but Norman Bates is one of those rare horror icons where you almost want to see him be the good guy because he has that potential to be a good person, and he is a good person. It's really his upbringing that brings him down and how society views him. And the sequel does pose some interesting questions like, I, I often wondered myself, is like, could I forgive this guy for killing my sister, you know? Um, could I forgive him for that? And, you know, would I be able to realize that the circumstances weren't his fault? I mean, he was abused by his mom and apparently abandoned by his father. But uh, it's, it's interesting to think and uh, how quickly society demonizes people and how often we don't give second chances to people. And, you know, I'm not saying that there are obviously people who don't deserve a second chance. But there are people that do and they don't get it and things end up getting worse and people wonder why. And it's, it's because, I mean, there's not enough of that in society even back in the 80s and the 60s. But it posed some interesting questions and it's, it's thrilling in some parts. This, it plays out more like a drama than it does a thriller. Like it, it's it's very much dedicated to its main character, Norman Bates, and how he re relates to people that have stayed at his hotel. I mean, he does make a friend in the movie and she is trying to help him kind of keep his grasp on reality. I think the director of this film realized that he wasn't going to touch Hitchcock's original. So, so, I mean, he made his own stylistic choices. There's a few callbacks to the original, but there's not so much that it just feels like unnecessary fan service. But you know what? This is a suitable sequel, and if you're hesitant, if you're hesitant to watch this, 
it's not going to destroy the original. It's actually a good film on its own. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I was honestly expecting this to be terrible from what I've heard over the years. But really, the solid direction and the good performances, especially from Anthony Perkins, really bring this movie up, you know, up to good, solid sequel material. So Psycho 2, have you seen it? What did you think about it? What's your favorite of the Psycho movies that's not the original? Comment below, let me know. My books are available on ebook and paperback. Thanks always for watching. Bye.